At the push of a button, you sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. We're talking about autonomous cars, no longer beholden to Hollywood sci-fi films. In fact, Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla Inc. and SpaceX, believes within a decade, self-driving cars will be as common as elevators. Industry experts say the technology is going to revolutionize or disrupt the transportation industry as we know it. I would say certainly within five years, we should start to see a far larger numbers of cars on the roads that are autonomous. Autonomous vehicles are not a new idea. Airlines have been semi-autonomous for years. A pilot will handle takeoff, but most of the time autopilot is initiated, and some systems will even allow for auto landing while the pilots monitor the aircraft. It's the same kind of thing with self-driving cars. At the moment, the technology still needs a human behind the wheel to intervene. But in general, the car does the driving. As it drives, autonomous cars usually use a technology called LiDAR, which emits millions of laser beams per second, giving cars a 360-degree view. It also uses radar to detect how far away objects are and their speed, and a camera detects other visuals such as stop signs or red lights. Then there's the car's computer, which combines all of that data and analyzes it in real time. This is called deep learning, the technology that allows the car to make decisions on its own, getting smarter as autonomous cars spend more time on the road. And just like you have a brain telling your arms and legs to move, the car has technology that tells it to steer, brake, and accelerate. Assisted by a global positioning system, aka GPS, which uses satellite data to tell the car where it is on the map. So what does this all mean for the not-so-distant future? There are many predictions, but Carone believes car ownership will plummet. Instead, more people will rely on Uber and Lyft-type apps that deliver self-driving cars on demand. Certainly in 10 years, most of us probably won't own a car. We'll have a subscription with some company like an Uber. Every morning we wake up and there's a car in our driveway that will take us to work. That means there will be less of a need for parking within a city center. It would flip a city's infrastructure upside down. As well, many reports have suggested that there will be fewer accidents on the road with self-driving cars, which will significantly change the insurance revenue model. Almost 90% of road accidents are caused by human error. Road injury is the eighth leading cause of death in the world just behind diabetes. Road traffic accidents kill an estimated 1.4 million people a year, according to the World Health Organization. Road accidents kill more men than women and are the biggest killer of 15 to 29-year-olds globally. Now, insurance companies charge based on driving history and how much of a risk you are. If you're a young male who's been in an accident, then you're considered high risk and will get a more expensive premium. But what happens when you take that driver away from the wheel? Would you need insurance at all? It's also not clear who will be at fault when an accident does occur. The car manufacturer, the driver, or both? The UK is considering legislation that would make insurance for self-driving cars mandatory. The idea is that if there's a car malfunction during an accident, then the manufacturer would have to pay for the damages unless the car owner made unauthorized changes to the vehicle's software or fails to install an update. It will also affect law enforcement, experts say. In theory, no speeding tickets will be given out with self-driving cars and we will see a decline in drunk driving and other traffic violations. On the job front, others believe self-driving technology will shake up the delivery industry. Job losses will be substantial for truck drivers, according to a report by McKinsey & Company. On the flip side, trucking companies are estimated to save between $100 to $500 billion US per year by 2025 from driverless vehicles. This would come from the elimination of truck drivers and their wages. But a lot of debate still surrounds one question. Are self-driving cars safer than cars driven by humans? On March 18th, a woman in Tempe, Arizona died after being hit by a self-driving car operated by Uber with an emergency backup driver behind the wheel. It is believed to be the first pedestrian fatality associated with self-driving technology. Researchers working on autonomous technology have struggled with how to teach the systems to adjust for unpredictable human behavior or driving. So let's say self-driving technology could help prevent more accidents. Our vehicles may come up against moral dilemmas. What if a fully automated vehicle is on the move following all the rules when suddenly a little girl and her grandmother are jaywalking and the car doesn't have time to stop? The car's computer would then have to decide, should it move to the right and hit the grandmother or move to the left and hit the little girl? Based on the calculation, would the little girl's life be more valuable because she has a longer life to live? The thing is, experts I spoke to say these kinds of situations are incredibly rare. This kind of ethical dilemma makes for good 
discussion and so on. It doesn't happen in, in normal course. Self-driving cars are here to stay, and one thing is clear, the disruption has already started. Experts say we can no longer take a wait-and-see approach.